Hey, welcome back, Rankers. Have you heard? Google's in big trouble. And not for the first time. And we've been saying this for quite a while, but for other reasons. But they're in big trouble because of an antitrust case that was brought against them by about 38 different states in the US. And the judge has just handed down his findings and he said, yes, uh, Google has actually breached the Sherman Act, uh, Section 2 of the Sherman Act, where it said it has used its uh, monopolistic position to gain an unfair advantage. And the main reason seemed to be around that Google has paid companies like Apple and other browser developers and those sorts of people uh, billions and billions of dollars uh, to be the default search engine on their devices. Now, for Google's part, they've said that, oh, no, the you know, people would have used our search engine anyway. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe that's true. But the court has said, well, you've abused these powers. Now, what does that mean? Well, uh, the judge has yet to hand down the decision about what the remedy should be or, you know, what uh, Google's punishment is going to be. Google has already flagged that they're going to appeal the decision. Now, this court case started back in 2020, right? So these things go on for a long time. And it reminds me a little bit of the court case brought against Microsoft back in the late 90s, which also went on for years. And in that situation, uh, Microsoft was accused of abusing their mon monopolistic uh, position as the default operating system for most computers uh, by keeping other browsers uh, out of their operating system. And in fact, back then, you couldn't remove uh, Internet Explorer, which was their browser back then, from the operating system. It was built into the system. And, you know, one of the main casualties of that was one of the most popular browsers out there called Netscape at the time. And the the outcome of that case was, and that was around the time you may have seen the videos of Bill Gates getting a pie in his face and all those sorts of things. Around that time, um, what happened was the, the decision was handed down and Microsoft back then was ordered to break the company up. Basically, they were ordered to um, separate the business so that the operating system, so Windows, was, was one business and then all the other applications like Microsoft Office and Paint and Minecraft, no, Minesweeper, whatever the whatever the else they had back then, um, were put into a separate company. So you would have two different companies. Anyway, Microsoft appealed the decision and the outcome of it was that all that Microsoft ended up having to do was make their APIs more available to other developers, which meant you know other browsers could, other browser manufacturers or developers could develop for the Windows platform. So, you know, we're, it was it was a big difference from the original judgment, which was no, you've got to break the company up. And back then, you know, a lot of uh, people in the tech industry were hoping they were going to be broken up. Didn't happen. And we're seeing a similar thing now with a lot of people that are angry at Google online. And the main reason that they're angry at Google in recent times is because of some of the updates that have come out in the last 18 months to two years. And, you know, devastated businesses and there's a lot of information out there about that with their helpful content update and their core algorithm updates and all those sorts of things. Um, certainly... I don't think, and what the courts just said, that Google has a monopolistic position. I don't think anyone would argue with that. But, you know, there's been no talk about this court case that um, <clears throat> Google should be broken up. That judgment, that that remedy, if you like, is yet to be handed down. A lot of people are, are hoping, once again, that like they did with Microsoft, that that's going to happen. Um, certainly, most people in the search industry probably won't say this publicly, but they would say, yes, Google has a monopolistic position. But some SEOs that I talk to, and um, and certainly me back in the day when I was so focused on um, you know trying to beat the Google, Google algorithm, we we're all a bit scared about saying anything bad about Google publicly. I have done it in the past, and it has got me into trouble with Google. Um, nothing that I can prove, <laughs> but I've certainly seen 
some uh, some ranking drops that I didn't expect except of what I said publicly. The other thing that's happened to a lot of people, of course, is with their strikes on YouTube and those sorts of things that, you know, Google has a, essentially a monopolistic position uh, with its ownership of YouTube. But that hasn't, from what I, my reading of it, that hasn't come into this court case at all. So some people are saying, oh, it's going to be better. You know, maybe they'll have to break up, you you know, release YouTube out of their portfolio of products to make it a separate company. None of that has really come up in this uh, court case. There is some talk about, you know, Google's abuse of their power in this situation has meant that advertising costs are more expensive, which, yes, I would agree with. Um, but there's no guarantee the advertising costs are going to come down because of this ruling. So the other thing that's come into this, and, and, and this statement from Google, uh, straight after the judgment came out, they said within hours, they're going to appeal it. And one of the things that they said was, you know, people are getting information from other sources than just search engines now. And I, I did uh, make a post on LinkedIn as soon as the judgment came out that I, I would say that Google's monopolistic grip on what we now call search is actually loosening because there are so many other options now. And we've talked to them about them ad infinitum over the last 18 months on this show. And specifically, I'm thinking about tools like the uh, first one that came out was Perplexity. Uh, and certainly just, you know, people using um, tools like ChatGPT, even Google's own Gemini, uh, even tools like now Claude Anthropic, which essentially is what I'm pretty much using exclusively at the moment because the output is, is just so much better and I love their project setup. So maybe I'll, I'll do a review on that and, uh, and why I'm using that. But a lot of people are, are looking to get their, their, what they would normally go and search for out of what we would call, say, these answer engines, if you want to give them a name. But the, essentially, I just talk, to, talk about them as AI assistants. And people are always going to follow the path of least resistance, right? And the same is true with search. And Google's been trying to do that for years with their algorithm. Um, they've been trying to make it so it's easier for, for you to get that information faster. And that's why we have all these things like, you know, rich snippets, rich answers, why we can see, you know, what the what your product levels are in the search results, why we can see if you have, you know, um, a special or a sale on in the search results. We don't have to actually go to every site to find that out. We can just click on the ones that we can see in the search results. So it's trying to save us time. It's that path of least resistance. And, you know, the whole thing about zero click results as well is, is similar. And Google has done that because it knows that's what people want. And that is what the AI assistants or the large language model assistants are giving us now, right? Now we've got uh, OpenAI has just released Search GPT. I still don't have access, but we'll be bringing you an update on that. And they've called it Search GPT, but essentially these tools, these large language models, and you know, I've got a, a local one that I've used here that I've gone and asked to produce a report for me this morning on the judgment. And it's gone off and done on the searches itself and it's found all the resources and then it's given me a summary report right now that tool is such a time saver for me and i don't have to go and do the searches and i've seen people say that well you know large language models are so much slower than google search and certainly in my last show if you watch that where i built my own little search engine using uh claude anthropic it is quite slow and it gives you the results. But tools like Perplexity as well, you could argue, are quite slow. But where they make up for that time and, and you know giving you those results like that, like Google currently does, is that you don't have to go and click on five results like you do in Google. You get a much better answer. You're getting someone something else to do the search for you. And then you are selecting what you want to go and read. That's not the same with Google. Google is feeding you a bunch of um, URLs to go and look at, which may have the answer that you're looking for in them. And 
I think by the time this appeal gets around, and you know, obviously I'm not a lawyer, um, that Google would have um, lost more dominance, certainly in the search, and search isn't going to be the thing that it is today. And I think what all business owners, and certainly what we're telling our clients, need to be doing is doubling down on obviously building the list, building that key asset, but making sure that they're delivering what the customers want to see uh, via the site. Now, that sounds like such a simple, easy thing to do, but you'd be surprised how it can get lost in the... Uh, in a, in a website, especially e-commerce sites, but also lead gen sites, where so many other people might be involved in the website and there's a lot of people thinking that the website should do certain things, which is just not for. If you're trying to make uh, money online through digital, then you, your websites need to deliver the information to your target audience as quickly and as easily as possible. And that's all that these search these AI search tools or AI assistants are going to be looking for as well. Like you go and do a search in uh, perplexity for, uh, um, you know, who has the cheapest carpet in Melbourne and or where's the best place to buy cheap carpet in Melbourne. And you will get a number of results in there. And perplexity is going to go and have a look at things like your reviews. So whilst... Um, these search tools like Google uh, may see uh, a drop in their users and they already have or, or in what people are actually searching for. Platforms like Trustpilot, Yotpo, JudgeMe, all of these other ones out there, they could see a, a real growth period coming up because the AI tools are going to be looking at those sorts of things. They're going to be looking at the things that your customers want to know. How easy is it to find shipping information on your site? I mean, that's one of the key things that we will go and focus on. We've got a, a Scrum report um, that we do two of these a month that because they're an in-depth look at... Uh, usually they're a corporate client that will come to us with one of these or a or a larger e-commerce business or an established e-commerce business. And we will go through and we will go on through and look at all the ads. We'll go through and we will look at all the organic uh, information, you know, you know, ranking, SEO, the whole bit, um, Google ads, Bing ads, whatever they're, they're doing. And then we'll go and have a look at things like the user experience. And then we'll produce a report about how this business could be making more money. And this year... Uh, we've been producing them because they're easier to produce now because we've developed another tool that allows us to compile the report fast and making sure it's consistency and everything else. But the work itself is done by our internal subject matter experts. And incidentally, we've just launched a site where you can go and apply for one of these reports. And if you're a competitor to one of our clients, we probably won't do one for you unless the client says, yes, it's okay. But these reports are so valuable because they're not only looking at what you know Google will go and check. We're looking at things from a user's perspective. And that's what you should be doing. And that's why they're so valuable is because... If you're looking at your site and what you offer from a user's perspective, you're going to rank better. But more importantly, you're going to sell more. And the same is true when we're talking about tools like Search GPT, like Perplexity, like Apple. Like We're going to see Google lose a lot of traffic through the new Siri as well when it comes out in next month, I think it is. And they will lose more traffic there because Siri has got its own onboard uh, AI or large language model or small language model or medium language model. It's only 3.5 billion parameters or something like that. But they actually have teamed up also with OpenAI to deliver uh, more data from you know the greater universe of the internet out there. That's a terrible way to phrase it, but you know what I mean. And... 
you know, you think about the difference between picking up your phone and Googling something. I stopped using Siri quite a while ago, um, unless I'm driving, and then I'll use it, obviously. Drive safe. But with the hooking up with AI, it's going to be the assistant that we always hoped, I think, we wanted it to be. And it's going to be looking at all those things. It's going to be looking at the things that you want to know, that your customers want to know. How quickly can I get this? Is this product in stock? All of those sorts of things, you've got to make it easier for your customers to find it first and foremost. But then the agents that your customers are using, okay? Because they're going to be looking at the same things that your customers want to look at. Hopefully that's helpful. If you would like more information on our Scrum report and uh, if you think it might be helpful for you, we're getting fantastic feedback. I'm reading these reports and I'm going, wow, this is just absolutely awesome. Um, the team have just done a magnificent job of producing these and the information it gives you is basically three months worth of work that you can go and roll out. These aren't things that we've just, you know, exported from a third-party tool or anything like that. There's no third-party tools involved in producing this report. This is hard yards, subject matter experts going through and looking through every aspect of your site, of your advertising, and working out how you can be getting more leads and more sales. Hopefully that's helpful. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to be doing these more often. Had a lot to say. I'll bring you a review on Search GPT when I actually get access. And also voice mode, which is just mind-blowing from uh, OpenAI, when we have, or advanced voice mode, as I should call it, because that's just extraordinary again. And it will probably compete with a little with Siri as well. So there's a lot happening, but what is changing and what businesses should be aware of is focusing on the customer and giving them the best experience. We'll see you very, very soon. Hopefully quicker than a month this time. Thanks very much. Tell your friends. See you next time. Bye.